Welcome to this video on the cash flow statement. Um, it's a follow on video from a previous recording. And if you didn't watch that one, please do that first before you continue with this, um, uh, with this recording, because it follows the same scenario. And we've already done some computations, which will be helpful here. We're going to in this video discuss the indirect method of performing the computations necessary to arrive at cash flows from operating activities, a very critical component of the cash flow statement. So if this is something you want to get right in the exam, please keep watching, do keep watching and let's get solving. So the scenario you've got here is the same scenario that we had in the previous uh, in the previous uh, recording. I'm not going to obviously read that. We had a good look at it before. Let me just stress that we are still computing cash flows from operating activities for the year 2023 activities. And um, I'm going to assume you, you know, remember what you did, what we did in the previous video. And let me just start off with the um, idea that at the end, we will arrive at the same figure at which we arrived before. And I just look at my notes and in the previous recording, we arrived at cash flows from operating activities, which were equal to 304,000, uh, what's this, euro. So it was a positive 304,000 euro. And it would be good if we arrived at the same figure here, because the idea is we're going to follow a different methodology, but the results should be the same. Now, the starting point, with the indirect method is going to be our net income and net income of plus 288 positive. Please recall that with the direct method, we just went through cash inflows, identified them as cash inflows from customers. Then we had cash outflows to suppliers, to uh, employees, and we went line by line, added the inflows, deducted the outflows, and we got a result. With the indirect method, we're not going to do that. We're going to start with the accounting profit of the company or the profit reported in the, in the accounting income statement and make certain adjustments to this, which will reflect the fact that many of the lines in the income statement do not necessarily correspond to cash flow uh, coming in or cash coming out or going out. Or even if there is an associated cash flow, it doesn't necessarily have to be equal to whatever is reported over there. So how do we deal with this? I'm going to do two things. First of all, I'm going to leave some space over here so that we can actually introduce these adjustments. But kind of on the side, maybe here, I'm going to write the result plus 288. I'm going to identify its component parts and then check out what's wrong with them, possibly from a cash flow perspective. So this 288,000 that we've got is definitely a function of the fact that the company had sales. Now these sales one were a positive 1,200 or 1,200,000. Now, what is more, the company had, let me draw this maybe here, as one of its uh, you know, cost items, the cost of sales. And cost of sales was a negative 840,000. So this obviously is a contributive, contributing factor when it comes to the computation of profit. And then we have this other operating expenses line, um, which uh, is 72,000 negative. But we've got, we've got note A, which says that this is you know, comprised of a couple of things uh, behind that. Depreciation of property, plant and equipment, wages, and a 6,000 gain from the disposal of a fixed asset. So let me maybe say here, gain on disposal. This is a positive 6,000, and that definitely contributed to the net profit being uh, whatever it is. We also have um, depreciation another contributing factor. So maybe let me write that here. Depre depreciation, sorry, depreciation. That was, uh, what is it? Uh, where is it? 36,000. Apologies for that. And that's a negative item. So it's a cost. Okay. Uh, what else? Wages for the year. And wages, another expense. 
minus 40 42 sorry and let me just check on my calculator what i've got everything uh you know included here if uh, if i take these items one by one will i arrive at a profit of 288 so 1000 sorry 1200 for sales add 6 deduct 840 but then deduct 42 and also deduct this 36. Okay, I've got 288 on my calculator. You can check this as well. I'm not showing you my, my, my calculator view. There simply isn't enough space here. But this seems to be providing the right answer. Okay, so what do we now need to do? What do we do now? Well, we must recognize the fact that the, the individual items that comprise the income statement as such, the individual items of revenue and expenses or gains and losses do not necessarily correspond to how much cash was received. For example, the fact that depreciation was charged to P&L, to the income statement, has absolutely nothing to do with depreciation actually leaving the company. There is no cash outflow when we charge depreciation. So in a way, I must neutralize or add back the depreciation expense if I want to turn this net income figure into a figure that corresponds to how much cash was received or paid when it comes to operating activities. So one of the primary um, adjustments you're going to see and typically comes first in a cash flow um, in the cash flows from operating activities that are computed under the indirect method is the adjustment for depreciation. Uh, and it's all about adding back the depreciation expense that was included in the computation of net income. So as to make sure it no longer has any impact. Okay, this is quite, I guess, quite natural. Now, let's focus on this one, gain on disposal. We sold an item of um, property plant equipment. This is talked about in point B, which had a certain carrying amount, 18,000 at the date of disposal. And we generated a gain on it. So I guess we sold it for more than its carrying amount. That's how you compute the accounting gain on disposal. So probably it was sold for 18 plus 6 for 24,000, something we'll get back to in the next video when we deal specifically with this item. This gain absolutely doesn't represent the amount of cash received. It's just an accounting comparison of how much we got relative to how much was sitting in our balance sheet for that asset. So it has nothing to do with cash being received. I'm going to neutralize it by adjusting or deducting this gain and you may say, well, what about the cash actually received? Yes, there was cash received, but selling an item of property, plant and equipment, despite the fact that it generates cash, isn't part of our so-called operating activities. When you um, perform some asset sales, sales of non-current assets, we treat this, this as an element of so-called investing activities or cash from investing activities so it doesn't impact our operating activities section of the cash flow statement. However, because our starting point here is net income, I definitely want to include an adjustment for the gain on disposal of that item of property, plant and equipment. And it's an adjustment that goes down or it's a downward adjustment because I want to clear the net income from this effect or of this effect. I don't want to have any uh, remain, remi remainder of that gain sitting in my, in, my, um, in my net income anymore. And when or if I were to come to the investing section of the cash flow statement, which I'm not going to do here because I'm only focusing on operating activities, I would simply include as something positive the entire proceeds, so the money received from the sale. So this is this is like a clearing operation. Okay. Now, these two things have been offset. That's fine. Let's um, focus on the other items. Sales. Included in the income statement as uh, 1,200,000. We know that. However, if you watch the previous video, 
and remember what we did there, we calculated that the cash which was received from clients wasn't actually 1,200,000 because we noted the increase that happened during the year to our trade receivables. Trade receivables here grow by 24,000 year on year. And that means you didn't receive from your clients 1,200,000, but 24 less. So the actual cash received from clients is 1,176,000. And if you're not sure about why that is, go back to the previous video. We explained the concept and the relationship between trade receivables and sales. So what I'm going to have over here is an adjustment for the changes in trade receivables. And if, because trade receivables have gone up from a level of 235 to a level of 259, this means I received less cash than what the sales figure shows. So it's a negative adjustment to net income where net income is a function also of the sales figure that we reported. Okay. Now, let's deal with cost of sales. Once again, reverting to the logic that I presented in the previous video, and if you don't remember, watch it. I said that cost of sales is not synonymous with purchases that we made. And purchases from suppliers are not synonymous with the cash paid to suppliers. So first of all, if you've got a cost of sales figure, but at the same time, you see that your inventory went up during the year over here, this, uh, this middle line within assets, by a, uh, by a uh, figure of 20,000, that means the amount sitting within cost of sales, which represents the cost of the goods which were shipped to customers, is actually lower than what you purchased from suppliers. You didn't just replenish your inventory. So some items left, you purchased additional items, but this wasn't equal. If it had been equal, inventory would have stayed at the same um, level. Now, you purchased more than the value of the goods which you sold. That's why inventory grew by 20. So I'm loading this with an additional 20 to say, hey, this is how we get to our purchases figure. And this is not the end of the story. Purchases, as I said, do not equal cash paid to suppliers. In order to figure out how much cash was paid to suppliers, you still have to focus on your current liabilities, where within current liabilities, I see trade payables. And trade payables, I can see, went from 138 to 168, which basically means growth of 30 year on year. So there was growth of 30 year on year, which means we kind of withheld certain payments which uh, would have gone to our suppliers. And that's a positive factor when it comes to going from purchases to cash paid to our um, suppliers for deliveries. So negative 840 minus 20, that would be negative uh, 860, but plus is a negative 830. This, as you may remember from the previous video, was the actual cash paid to suppliers. The way to arrive at this figure in the indirect method of doing uh, the cash flow statement is just go line by line. So take inventory and say, well, inventory grew from or to a level of 160 from an initial level of 140. That's uh, growth of 20 which means we purchased more inventory than was shipped to clients. But then when it comes to our trade payables, there was also growth to a level of 168 from an initial level of 138 at the beginning of the year. Growth of 30, which this time is a positive adjustment because if your payables grow, it means you haven't paid money to somebody else or you, you've extended the scale of the non-payment. And that's a positive adjustment from a cash flow point of view. 
when it comes to wages payable, please note that there is no difference. There is no change um, year on year. So I'm not even going to deal with this. It means that the figure which went to the income statement to the computation of this 288 does not require any adjustments. It's fine as it is also from a cash perspective. That's how much cash went to employees. And it's something we also recognized when we uh, did this under the direct approach in the previous video. Let's see what the outcome is. Starting with 288 at the top, plus 36, but minus 6, minus 24, minus 20, and plus 30. Okay, I can see on my calculator a result of 304,000, which would be my cash flows from operating activities. And it's the figure I knew I wanted to arrive at because it's what we computed in the previous video as well. So look, the key to doing the cash flow from operating activities under the indirect method is to definitely make an adjustment for depreciation or amortization, eliminate any gains or losses on disposals of items, property, plant and equipment, and then make sure to go through your so-called working capital items, uh, trade receivables, inventory and trade payables being the classic ones, and make sure you compute the differences, the growth or fall in these items year on year. But think about the correct sign here. If it's the case that items like, um, you know, trade receivables or inventory, so these are effectively current assets. If these are growing year on year, as was the case here, the adjustment is a negative one. Growth in current assets means or can be interpreted as cash being frozen because either you've purchased more inventory and that means cash went out to buy that additional inventory or if trade receivables are growing, it means customers are not paying you. On the other hand, if these items are falling, that would be a positive adjustment over here. It's the reverse logic when it comes to trade payables or items of liabilities. Because when these items grow year on year, as was the case here, it means you're extending the scale of non-payment to others. And that's positive from a cash flow perspective, even if it's not very positive from a business perspective.